Bitcoin could be on the verge of a monster move. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the data behind it and also how you can play the next couple of weeks and months in crypto to maximize your returns. We're going to be discussing my top altcoin plays, one of which I added a significant bag of today that I was holding off on before, but I decided to take a big position based on the fact that it's had a major dip. So I'll be revealing that coin and we'll also be discussing my strategy going into the remainder of Q4 here. You can see this post from Ansem saying 100k Bitcoin by Q1. Is this within the realms of possibility? Well, we're going to discuss that today and take a look at the charts because something big is happening with Bitcoin. Let's talk about it. Looking at the Bitcoin chart right now, you can see we are now starting to flirt with the possibility of a confirmed breakout above the range high. I think, look, a lot of people have PTSD because we keep testing this level and getting rejected. But in my opinion, it is only a matter of time. And this move does feel a little bit different in the sense that open interest hasn't built up as much. So there isn't as much leverage. We actually saw a leverage flush out, which reset the market over the last 24 hours. A lot of this bid is coming from spot bidders positioning. We could see Trump's election odds have significantly increased, which is resulting in, I think, a bit of pre-positioning ahead of that potential outcome and just a variety of other factors, which lead me to believe that, you know, there is a stronger chance, I think, we could actually break above and move higher within the coming weeks. Doesn't mean we can't get rejected here over the next day and consolidate below before the breakout, but it does feel like we are knocking on the door of an overall market sentiment shift. The other thing to keep in mind is that there's a lot of sideline capital. Like I feel like there's a lot of people right now on the sidelines waiting to pull the trigger, both from a TradFi standpoint and also in crypto. I do notice that um, a lot of people missed a lot of the entries over the last couple of weeks and are still asking me like, Mars, when do I enter these coins? Which shows me that there is a little bit of sideline capital. One significant thing about the Bitcoin move that we did get yesterday is that it was the highest volume for hourly candle that we saw since the 50k bottom print in August. So significant interest stepped in actually on the perp side when we started to flirt with the possibility of breaking out, but the market did reset uh, before we started to gain a bit of momentum back today during the Asia session. I want to focus on this post though by Follis, which kind of sums up, I think, how a lot of people are feeling right now. You know, when we first flirted with the idea of breaking Bitcoin all-time high, everyone was thinking, you know, we're going to go straight to 100k. We ended up rejecting. I mean, at the time, there wasn't a clear resistance level, but it was just above the prior all-time high at 70k. Uh, we ended up deviating above and then obviously coming back down. Then we made a second attempt. Everyone thought, okay, easy mode is back. And then we ended up coming back down. down. Then we came back to this level again. We got rejected again, came back to the level, got rejected again. And it's pretty much the sixth time now that we are flirting with this resistance level. So a lot of people, I think, are tired. You can see Follis here making a joke, like, I'm tired, boss. A lot of people are tired of these moves. They're distrustful of these moves. They don't trust the market, basically. And they're waiting for a confirmed break to position. This, in my opinion, is the perfect setup, though, for a really big move, not just to all-time highs, but well above all-time highs, because so many people aren't trusting the move. Because we keep rejecting and because every single time it's ended up being faded and because a lot of people are waiting for a confirmed breakout, if we do move above, there's going to be a lot of people offside waiting into FOMO back higher into the market. There's also a contingent of people that are actively shorting the market with shorts piling up between the 69k and the 73k region, which was the yearly all-time high, which is, in my opinion, going to result in massive liquidations and massive volatility around a potential all-time high break, which in my opinion could lead to a short squeeze. And if we do get a short squeeze on Bitcoin that takes us above the previous all-time high, a lot of the people that were shorting or just weren't trusting the move and were sidelined, they're going to be forced to FOMO in a lot higher. Basically, either FOMO in or risk Bitcoin potentially running to 100k sooner than you think. That's why I believe when the big move happens, and it may not be today, Making that clear, I'm not trying to get you to FOMO into the market right now. Um, I'm just making you aware of this. When this move does happen, I think it'll be bigger than a lot of people expect. But also brace for the possibility that, you know, we keep chopping over the next few days. That doesn't necessarily mean we're going to do it now, but you need to be prepared for it. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to be prepared, mostly focusing on the altcoins because I like to play alts as a proxy to BTC. 
But this is all really super um, important information when it comes to developing a game plan here. Now, looking at my charts, one thing I wanted to point to your attention is the fact that we are now starting to hold above for a significant amount of time. This is the three daily chart here. The crucial level that I outlined is the key previous mid-range pivot point at 65,000. We actually made a higher high above that region at 67,500. That's where we're currently hovering right now above this level, technically a higher high. And we also have made our second consecutive higher low. So it indicates to me that although the macro trend is down, there is a very strong trend starting to form to the upside. What we did get, of course, which shook a lot of people out and even made me a little bit scared last week was this week down, which flirted with the possibility of a lower low, which would have put 52k back on the table. That did not happen. It was a week that didn't actually close below at all. The daily close, and this is the three daily um, candle here, ended up happening above before we eventually reclaimed, made a higher low, and pushed past the mid-range pivot point. So that shook a lot of people out, and I think that's one of the reasons why the last few days um, have been so violent in terms of the moves across Bitcoin and altcoins, because a lot of people are sidelined, as I mentioned before. Now, before we get into the strategy, what are some of the underlying factors slash variables that are impacting this current Bitcoin move? Because as I mentioned, although that final spike was all leverage, a lot of the initial bid came from spot bidding. It came from uh, spot Bitcoin flow. This is partly attributed to the fact that we are seeing record Bitcoin ETF inflows right now. You can see over the past three days, we've had 253 million, 555 million, and 371 million worth of inflows. Just the 11th of October till the 14th of October alone was the biggest inflow period since June 4th. And with today's data coming out, I assume that will take us back to levels not seen since May this year, which is absolutely insane. Pretty much since the ETFs first launched earlier in the year, these are record flows. So TradFi is definitely coming more on side, or at least the retail contingent that operate within the TradFi world buying these ETFs through the stock market. Uh, why is this the case? Well, I think one of the potential reasons could potentially be the fact that Trump's election odds are significantly increasing, at least according to Polymarket, which is reflective of betters. Now, I do think maybe Polymarket is slightly skewed to Trump because it has that crypto contingent, but the volume to me does suggest that the market is wide enough that you do have a larger retail base potentially speculating on this outcome and it's leaning towards a Trump victory and that has spiked over the last few days and that is roughly also in line with some of the poll data that I've been seeing. Another reason why I think Bitcoin is repricing to the upside and we're seeing significant um, ETF flows is because of the macro backdrop. Obviously, we had the Fed pivot. However, stocks reacted really well to that. And, you know, the Chinese liquidity stimulus news where stocks started flying and Bitcoin was lagging, we're now starting to see Bitcoin catch up. So typically, when Bitcoin lags stocks for an extended period of time, it does tend to shorten that discrepancy. And that's what we are seeing now. Stocks, which are making all-time highs, are still leading Bitcoin, which is still, I mean, if we go into the chart right now, we can do the math. 11% away from its all-time high. So it's still lagging by around 10% versus the stock market, which means there is room, uh, room to move up. And actually, at times, Bitcoin doesn't just re-correlate with stocks. It can actually go the other way and outperform stocks because people that want to go risk on, let's say they're betting on a Trump victory or they're just betting on better market conditions due to macro factors, they're actually better to be positioned in Bitcoin, which is a more reflexive asset when it comes to sentiment and just general bullishness in the market as well as liquidity because it's a more sensitive asset than equities to liquidity. So if you want to position risk on, you're better off going in Bitcoin so it can actually end up outpacing uh, stocks at certain points. And that is totally what I anticipate during periods of probably Q4 and, and also Q1 looking into next year. And that very well could be the fuel for something like a move to 100K, which by the way, 100K for this cycle, I don't think is totally out of the realms of possibility. In fact, that is roughly in line with my thinking. Whether or not it does actually happen by Q1, I mean, that is a very bold statement that Answer made. I don't know. If it doesn't happen in Q1, it's probably going to happen sometime later in the year. So your plan won't really change. Um, just the time frames on maybe how aggressively you take profits change. We'll get into that in just a couple minutes here when we dig deeper into the altcoin strategy. Andrew Kang points out that if Trump were to win the election, Doge could be one of the strongest proxies due to the fact 
that you don't only have high odds of a Doge ETF, but the Department of Government efficiency, Doge, will be making headlines every week and will be pushed forward by Trump. You can see him quote tweeting um, Elon Musk. I think it's on whatever that other social media he, he tweets on. He posted it. So he is also kind of embracing this. So if he wins, I think Doge could be a proxy, even heading into the election and obviously performing well afterwards. Um, MAGA, you know, the Trump meme coin as well, is, an, is another proxy. Uh, he's got his World Liberty coin, which you can buy now on pre-sale. That's another proxy. So there are all these proxies for a potential Trump victory, if you want to speculate on that. But I mean, it should be good for crypto anyway, if it does happen. It's not 100%, of course, if you look at the poly market odds. But if, you know, you subscribe to that theory, then I think crypto, at least in the immediate term, does perform better um, with the Trump victory. Looking at the Dogecoin chart, because if it is a proxy, how would you play it based on TA? I actually really like what I'm seeing here. I'll make this line even more obvious to you by making it um, a solid line. You can see we have had the pivot off the lows. We've made a series of higher lows. We've also broken out from this diagonal trend here. The real level that you want to break um, for Dogecoin from a horizontal demand perspective is the 12.3 cent zone. If you can break this level, and I'm looking for price action like this, I'll draw it in with an arrow so it's even more obvious. This is typical price action. We probably break above, then we go below, we deviate, we trap late longs, and then you end up making your move to range high. So something like this playing out would give you the ability to enter on a break and then a retest slash hold of this major uh, resistance zone, which we look to flip into support if you're playing the bullish scenario. You probably could have gotten an entry a few days ago, but it's okay because it's only up, you know, what, 10% since then. So it's not really a huge loss, but um, definitely monitoring the Doge chart to see if the market starts to embrace it as a proxy like Andrew Kang is alluding to. Definitely feels like there are a few variables aligning here, which are, which are unique compared to earlier in the year with the Trump election uh, win odds spiking, the strongest Bitcoin inflow since June, a massive pump happening with dominance increasing alongside that, and Bitcoin and alts both at key breakout levels. We'll discuss altcoins in a second. Definitely feels like something is brewing. First, I want to touch on the penultimate point here, which is the fact that dominance is increasing. This is something that I'm seeing a lot of Bitcoin maxis flip as a bearish argument, but it's actually a bullish argument for alts, and let me explain why. Bitcoin dominance, yes, has been increasing since April 2023, and in recent weeks, and especially over the last couple of days, it has spiked up into the top of the range. But if you guys remember back to previous cycles and big altcoin seasons and big altcoin rallies from, you know, 2017, but more... Um, more recently, 2021, and even earlier this year, what typically tends to happen in the early stages or phase one of an altcoin move is dominance will increase alongside Bitcoin price increasing. What you don't want is the Bitcoin price decreasing and dominance increasing because that indicates that altcoins are dumping. If dominance increases while Bitcoin's going up, Yes, alts might go down a little bit and retrace a little bit, but what that means is liquidity is going back into Bitcoin, which is the leader. Now, you need Bitcoin to perform well in the early stages of a cycle because you need liquidity concentrating in crypto's biggest asset, its biggest marketing ploy, and the asset that a lot of altcoin pairs are denominated in on centralized exchanges and that a lot of whales hold because that liquidity tends to siphon down into the market as you go into phase two, three, four, etc., and you start to get a bid uh, across the altcoin market. So what we've seen recently is alts from time to time outperforming. You know, we saw it here, 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 like these little altcoin like legs that we go on to range low, but we haven't really had a strong Bitcoin dominance move since the end of last year. Now, after the end of last year, what happened after this move? We got a huge altcoin pump. What happened um, mid last year? We got a big altcoin pump. What happened earlier in March? We got a big altcoin pump. These pumps into range high on dominance tend to lead to big altcoin moves. And the last four times we've been rejected off the top of the channel. So if this is another move and another rejection into the top of the channel, that's actually the setup for a big alt season, which is why this chart is not bearish, like some of the Bitcoin guys on Twitter are tweeting about. It's actually a bullish thing. I'm actually going to do another Twitter post about that later today uh, to make that point clear. So looking at the altcoin market, um, going on from that, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing this also aligning for alts because we have made a nice move off the lows. I'll get my brush in here. So you made your low there. You made your higher lows. We've broken through the diagonal. This chart actually looks very similar to the Doge chart. And you are now starting to break above and hold above critical resistance. Now, 
I want to add some nuance here. This is the others chart, which basically excludes the top 10. So coins like, you know, Matic, ADA, XRP, if I know XRP is still in the top 10. Um, I don't know if ADA is right now, but it excludes a lot of them and it excludes stable coins, which changes the data a little bit. So this is more of a degen altcoin, pure altcoin index. The other index I talk about a lot on the show is the total three index, which only excludes Bitcoin and ETH. So I think it includes stables as well as some of these, you know, bigger coins like XRP and ADA, which are like trapping liquidity because a lot of people are in them from last cycle and just aren't selling. So it's kind of like trapped money, if you know what I mean. Um, If you look at this chart, the total three chart, we haven't actually moved above yet. So it depends what chart you want to look at. Altcoins, so the more degen chart, we are seeing an official breakout. Total three, which I think more people actually look at as a substantiator for an altcoin rally, you're only just starting to see the move. I think when the stars align on an official confirmed break on the weekly for others alongside total three, that's when you're going to see A, a higher high being made, but B, more importantly, that big altcoin move back up to your previous March highs. That That may not happen right away. We could reject a little bit here, like something like this, come here, um... And then, you know, deviate below, trap people, make you think we're breaking down and then pump. Like, it doesn't always happen that the market goes straight up, which is good because part of the strategy I'll talk to you about um, in a few minutes is basically taking advantage of some of the leverage shakeouts that we've seen over the last few days. And this leads me to a post that I made on my Twitter account earlier today where I highlighted the number one skill you need to have in crypto and the number one skill specifically right now that I think you need to be very cognizant of. And that's the fact that you need to know when to be risk on versus risk off in the market. So you actually don't need to pick the best coins in the market. You don't need to be the best trader in the market to make a lot of money in crypto. What you need to do is take advantage of momentum, not get greedy when the time comes to take profits and you'll come out ahead. My asset selection last cycle was arguably better so far in terms of hitting pure multiples, but I've made more money this cycle, mostly down to the fact that my intuition on when to be risk off and on has vastly improved. The lessons from 2021 and 2022, alongside the subconscious pattern recognition from the last five years in crypto, have made a huge difference. The good news is you can learn a lot of this stuff from people that have been around the block, for example, my channel, but time in the market is certainly the most important variable here. Now, in the comments to this point that I made, someone asked me, well, right now, Miles, are you risk on or are you risk off? And I'll tell you what I am. I'm macro risk on, so I'm spot risk on. I want to have exposure to quality alts. I want to have exposure to things like meme and AI. I'll discuss some of my top picks in a second. But I want to be micro neutral. So there are periods in the market where I'll go full risk on and incorporate a lot of leverage, especially like once we've broken out. But the problem is right now we are chopping. So even yesterday, we saw the squeeze to the upside and then we saw a major shakeout on Bitcoin and a lot of alts. If you were risk on in terms of leveraging, you would have gotten rinsed yesterday. I know a lot of traders that got absolutely rinsed yesterday. Right now, I am macro risk on in terms of spot, but I'm micro neutral. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm not touching leverage. I'm focusing on major dips and periods of choppiness that you get from people that over leverage and get liquidated. I'm taking advantage of those liquidation wicks. There's been a couple that we've gotten, which I want to discuss in a second, where I've seen opportunities on great alts to accumulate that were performing really well last week that dumped a lot over the past 24 hours because people started to degen and went crazy into the Bitcoin resistance break. And if we start, you know, chopping for a little bit and just toying with people around this level, you are going to see people levering up every time we're about to break and then getting rinsed every time we come back down. And on those downtrends, on those dumps, as we kind of chop around all-time highs, even if we break above, right, doesn't mean we can't chop below all-time highs for a bit. As people get rinsed in this compression range before a breakout, that is when you can really accumulate on those wicks because you'll get wicks below. Um, You can accumulate great quality altcoins and we'll we'll discuss that strategy uh, today. So TLDR on my strategy right now is a macro risk on and a micro neutral. What I'm preferring right now instead of taking on actual leverage is taking leverage via being on chain. So you can actually spot trade, but move down the risk curve a little bit to get exposure to the hype and the sentiment in the market right now without having to take on the liquidation risk of using leverage right now. For example, in the Discord, two days ago, I posted about Klaus at six at a 6.7 million market cap. In the morning when I woke up, it was a 2.5x higher. 
I woke up this morning and it was a 6.5x higher. This is in the Mars High Club, which is my exclusive Discord community. 30 hours, we made a 6.5x on Klaus. Shared it at 6.7. So I shared it here. Actually, it was around 7 by the time I posted. And it ran up 613%. Now it's still up 500%. And I did tell people in the Discord to take some profits this morning. Um, I said, I I'm not actually taking profits because I'll let you guys do it. But if you're up a 6.5x, you should take profits. And a lot of people message me saying, you know, Miles, I made a 4x on Klaus. After six months of losing money, I finally recovered my capital. Miles, you're the best analyst out there. Someone said, I subscribe to many YouTubers, but Miles is always on the top of my list. He gives the most well-rounded yet detailed alpha that anyone else... I have come across does. No homo. <laughs> um, firstly, I want to say thanks to everyone that watches these videos. I truly, truly, truly appreciate your support, not just for the members in the Mars High Club, but also everyone that spends their time watching me. I do my best every single day to give you the early crypto alpha and help you succeed in the market. Um, I want us to all succeed and really profit together this cycle. So these messages meant a lot, um, genuinely to see that the community was able to print here. Someone said, uh, bros is here. I've definitely made my membership money back on Klaus. Thanks for the call. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were thanking me for that one. But that just shows you, like, in a risk-on environment, you don't need to take on crazy leverage. You can just take opportunities as they come. I saw an opportunity on Klaus, and it ended up paying us a 6.5x in 48 hours, which was one of my best trades of the year so far. So if you don't access to those kind of calls, because I can't make them on the show, especially the, the low caps, you can join my Discord community. There's a link in the description below. We are approaching the gate, which we're closing at 1,000 members, but there is a few spots left. If you do want to join and be a part of that community i hope i can keep giving you alpha like that i feel like i'm really locked into the market right now like you know those periods as a trader where you feel like you're really in the zone like that's me right now like i, I just feel like i'm in touch with the market um i'm able to spot these plays and i'm really grinding like really like 24 7 right now um networking getting on a lot of calls i'm in a lot of telegrams uh just really working hard to hunt the alpha and you know it's paid dividends um in the group and with my own trading over the past few days which has been great Let's move on to what altcoins I'm focusing on today. Um, what am I focusing on today? Well, two sectors in particular, and I think these will maintain, actually there's three, that I think will maintain hype over the next few weeks and are probably the best ones to accumulate on these shakeouts slash dips. And you guys will notice I talk about buying dips a lot because I genuinely focus on buying dips a lot. All of you wanted to buy SPX at the highs when it went to a uh, billion dollar market cap the other day, and now it's already down 35%. I told you to wait, and now you're going to get a good entry. I actually made a move on SPX literally like 20 minutes ago, so I want to update you on that as well. But guys, just be patient. You will get your entries, and time and time again, the market shows you this. You don't need to ape into hype. You can be you know, level-headed, buy dips, and then you know your coins are going to rip when the time's right if you're in the right assets. So AI memes and GameFi are the three I'm focusing on right now. Firstly, let's discuss the meme coins. A lot of the Murad coins are pulled back a lot. Obviously, they run up a lot, but when something goes, you know, and flies to the sky, it has to come back down, and that is what's happened on a coin like SPX. So I actually took my first position on SPX since 250 mil. It's a bit annoying I wasn't buying in the interim here, on especially this pullback. I, I really should have bought, uh, but that's just me kicking myself. My first entry was at 250 during the Discord AMA that I did a few weeks ago. I missed the entire run up in terms of adding more. I told you guys I put a 50k position in at 250. It ran up to a 190k position. Now that position is back down to 140k. And this is the level where I'm adding more size. I'm probably going to add uh, another 50. I added another, I think, 30 this morning. Probably add another 50 over the coming days. I'm just taking it slowly. But I am DCAing into SPX because I want more of a bag here. Right now, it's only my fifth biggest meme coin holding. I want to make this a top three meme coin holding. Why? Murad has a lot of influence. I think when normies come back in, they're going to see what he's shilling and he has a really compelling narrative and I don't want to miss out on that um, just because, you know, I'm, I'm scared of buying into hype when hype can definitely keep lasting. I'll show you what I mean by that. I wouldn't, when I say buying into hype, um, never buy into a massive green candle, but you can buy into a macro hype cycle on major dips, just to clarify. Let me show you what I mean though. Pepe, right? Let's look here. Had this massive run. Like this, this is, so SPX had this run, like this parabolic run where it barely came down. Pepe had a very similar run when it pumped 790% to its highs. SPX pumped 1,600% to its highs. So both had their, this was both explosive legs, like their first explosive legs. Then what happened on Pepe is you had a cooldown 
and then that second major leg to the upside. That's what I think is going to happen on SPX right now. I think you're seeing a cooldown, and yes, you could go lower, and I'll just keep averaging in, but that's okay, because I think even if we chop and, and go lower, we are going to eventually have that second leg at some point, and this will probably correspond with the Bitcoin breakout that we've been discussing today, and that is when I think I'm really going to print on this XPS pos uh, SPX position. So if I can accumulate, let's say, you know, I've got, what, 140 in now, adding another 50, go to 190, maybe I end up DCAing another 60. If I could get a 250k position and this can 4x, which I think is totally reasonable, Murad's saying 50x, I only need a 4x to make a million dollars. That's my plan on SPX, super transparent, um, but that's literally my plan, and I, and I did add some today. Okay, it's starting to break down a little bit, but, you know, if we do end up breaking down, I'll just buy at every support level, that's fine. Um, and, yeah, that's my strategy with that. Uh, let's t turn off or turn on the drawings rather and look at Pepe as well. This is still at resistance here, either targeting a pullback or I might get back in on a reclaim of strength. I'm, Pepe is my biggest holding, right? So I don't really need to add more Pepe, but I do kind of liquid trade it a little bit around key levels. Whereas SPX, I need to add more exposure. So sometimes in crypto, you just need to work out if you need more exposure or not. Uh, Giga is another that I'm looking at adding exposure to. I just don't like how the chart looks. Um, it's been quite an ugly drawdown, but yeah, it's another Murad coin that's pulled back a lot, and I think at some point soon, it's at a 398 mil market cap right now, I'll look at, I'll look at re-entering this one. Mog is one that I'm really interested in sizing up on, I think it's my fourth biggest meme right now, I, I would love to make this also a bigger position, um, for me, I've got a lot of exposure to other areas of crypto. Uh, I'm just trying to like up my meme coin weightings a little bit whilst being reasonable about it because I don't want to just ape into massive green candles. And it's good that I waited for a significant entry uh, despite wanting to FOMO two days ago because we have had those 30% drawdowns across a lot of memes over the past few days. And I was, you know, lucky enough to be able to ride the Popcat wave after buying the dip. So I took some profits and, um, you know, now I can rotate them back into memes after a dip. So it's all kind of worked out, I think. And I do think memes will go much higher this cycle. So there's a few I'm looking at. SPX is the one I made a move on, but that's just based on my portfolio and my portfolio needs. I think what you should do is create a list of the top memes you want to accumulate. For me, there's only like six. I don't want to own 20, like six or seven memes that I want to accumulate. Um, just off the top of my head, SPX, Pepe, uh, Giga, Mog. Popcat, let me look through my list here. Um, I'm already holding a decent bag of Sundog, probably won't add any more, but I'm holding it with, oh, interested in sizing up slightly. Foxy, I'm holding a decent bag of, and that's a great one to trade because it respects levels really well. So those are the ones. I'm also considering maybe entering Mew. There are a couple more which I may add, but those are like the core positions for now, and, and the others will likely depend on, on what the TA technical analysis shows me. Apart from memes, AI and... RWA and GameFi are three of the other categories I'm looking at. These are four sectors uh, in totality that I believe really offer some of the most compelling upside this cycle, both from a narrative point of view, given the fact that they can solve real world issues, and also from a price point of view. Watch yesterday's video if you haven't already, because I give my top picks from each niche. These are all coins that I'm accumulating these for projects here and I uh, give you some honorable mentions in that video. I'll link it in, in the description below that are also slightly lower cap. And the last thing I want to comment on uh, before I head off here, which is really important, is portfolio positioning. So Ansem posted this tweet earlier today. Someone asked him if I had a million bucks cash, you know, what would you position in in terms of building a portfolio? And he said, look, I'd have 50% Solana, 20% Bitcoin, 10% WIF, 10% Phantom, 10% Rune. I think you buy early Q4, which is basically now, and you sell the local highs in three to four months. That's Anthem's thesis on the market that, you know, potentially we will hit 100k within the next uh, few months, which I think could happen. I, I don't... You don't need to predict to make money in the market, you know? Because it, even if you DCA this chop over the next few weeks and the market, you know, rips to 80 to 90K, you're still going to make a lot of money on these alts. They're gonna, alts are going to fly. Like, especially some of the on-chain stuff, um, if you're savvy and, you know, especially if you're in the Mars High Club and paying attention to that game we play in, in the Meme Talk channel and these, like, riskier low caps, you can print a lot on them as well. But the point I want to get to here is this portfolio is very good for this person with a million dollars because he has a million dollars. I know for a fact, because I've done polls on this, that most of you don't have a million dollars. Most of you probably have around 10k. That's the average based on the polls I've done and probably even lower, like probably three to five k is like the, the average portfolio size. Now, are you going to hold 
this portfolio, 50% Solana, 20% Bitcoin, if you've only got 3K and your goal is to make 50? No, because that's going to be very hard to 10X on a portfolio like that. The way you trade should be completely different to how I trade, right? And completely different from this other person over here and completely different from Ansem and how Ram trades will be different from me because there's way more money than me. Like we all have to trade a bit differently, right? And it also depends on your goals, you know? If you have a high risk tolerance and you want to make 100x, you're going to trade differently from someone that's happy to just turn 5k into 50. The point I'm trying to make here is the portfolio that's right for you and the strategy you implement is different. Watch these videos, take in the information, take the altcoin picks that I give you, but take it with some nuance. It may not fit into your portfolio strategy, or it may fit in with a slightly lesser or a slightly higher allocation. Let's take SPX, for example. Is this going to make you a 50x? All right, Murad says you might. I don't think you will. I'm targeting a 5x on this, but I can turn 250k into, you know, 1.25 million. And I'm very, very happy with making a million dollars off this one altcoin. That's an amazing trade, right? If you have a portfolio of 5k, is putting half your portfolio or 20% of your portfolio into a coin that's going to 5x worth it? Maybe not. Maybe it's worth moving down the risk curve a little bit more. Or maybe it is. It depends on your risk tolerance, but I'm just trying to get you to think about how you actually assess risk because it's easy to just, you know, look at tweets like this and and start to question, oh, you know, I'm too heavy in alts, am I too heavy in, in, or, you know, too underexposed to Bitcoin or this, or at the end of the day, this is a unique scenario based on someone with a million dollars, you know? Everyone has a different approach to the market. So I just wanted to make that that clear. Um, yeah, Miles High Club, link in the description if you want to join the Discord. Hopefully we get another 6.5x in the next few days. That would be nice. A nice way to send us into the weekend. If not, uh, I'll continue to hang out there and answer any questions alongside our amazing analysts. And thanks for all the support on the shows recently. Really been enjoying recording them, actually. It's been uh, it's been fun. It's been a fun week. Busy, but but very, very fun. And looking forward to seeing you either tomorrow or the day after. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace.